Today we're talking about the entrepreneurship ecosystem, um, entrepreneurial ecosystem, and um, you may think, well, how does this, how is this relevant to me? I, um, and I mean, fair question, tr uh, truth be told. Uh, my hope is that when you graduate from here, you'll have either a kick-ass job at a great company, or you'll be doing your own thing at a startup. And I think that either way, you will be uh, uh, in a position where you will be developing something new, whatever that may be. You're launching a product that already exists into a new market or launching a new product altogether. Um, you know, and again, if you're in, in, in your own company, you're launching your own, your own product, whatever that may be. And I want to make this class about helping you understand that you're not alone. Even if you're in an established business, that you don't have to be doing things by yourself. Um, I'll tell you one example. Uh, when I worked at the parachute place, you know, running the, the mar marketing department, there was a moment where I, I, there were certain things that I wanted to act upon, but I didn't have enough information to know if there was a valid way to do it. And um, I asked, uh, uh, to be connect in my company, someone who had connections locally to connect me with other people who worked in marketing and in, in manufacturing companies uh, across Volusia County. And so I went out there to talk to them and to get their best practices. And I learned a lot. And, and it took that realization, like, you know, telling, my, telling myself, I don't have the answers. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the, what the right thing to do is here. And I need to pick other people's brains. And knowing that there's people out there who can help is is what this what today is about what this course is about um there are tons of organizations out there that help you uh connect with um uh either the the right people or to give you at least ideas on best practices uh, and and you know i'll share with you some many of, of which are available locally but you should know that whatever i show you uh that is local, you can find either a comparable organization where you live or exactly the same, like a different chapter of the same organization. So uh, everything that I'm showing you today is available everywhere. Now, the rest of the video, uh, I won't be on the camera. Uh, instead, I'm going to uh, put uh, slides on the screen so you can see uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, this presentation, I did not make it. it it's actually, I, I borrowed this presentation from uh, from one of my colleagues who works for, he's the director for the FLVEC. That's a Florida, Florida Virtual Entrepreneurship Center. Um, he catalogs all the resources that are available for companies that want to innovate or entrepreneurs. And uh, he delivers this really, what I think is a really powerful presentation to the community about entrepreneurship and resources, okay? So again, you won't see me anymore in the rest of the video. I'm gonna to switch to, uh, to the screen where you are going to see you know, the actual presentation. Uh, he kicks it off by saying, uh, we're all entrepreneurs, okay? Uh, each one of us, uh, whether we work for a big company or not, we're entrepreneurs uh, at heart. And we don't, again, we don't have to have our own startup to be able to, to have that, uh, that bug, that innovation bug. He offers a couple of examples. The first one, you know, you may remember 2013, uh, the Super Bowl, the 49ers versus the Ravens. Lights go out for half an hour, okay? And leave it up to someone working inside Oreo to do something about that. That one person who was an employee of a very established business came up with this um, advertising campaign, okay? Um, it had thousands of retweets, uh, it, it just, it went viral, it went crazy. Uh, you can still dunk in the dark. It was a cool thing. And it was not the company that came up with it, it was a person within the company who came up with that idea. The other example that he uses, you know, this massive company, Zappos, uh, I think they have been purchased by, by Amazon, by Zappos. Um, the story goes that uh, one of the representatives was on the, f on the call, on the, f on the phone, with a customer troubleshooting some issue with uh, an order. And this was happening exactly at dinner time. They, um, and, and the representative knew like, you know, I'm taking away time with, from this person to, you know, while we're troubleshooting this uh, for her to cook dinner. So while he had her on the phone, he ordered a pizza uh, for her and her family. Uh, and this went viral, okay? Uh, so everyone started talking about this. 
uh, and you can imagine that this uh, person became a lifelong customer and the goodwill, the word spread out how cool Zappos is and how well known they became afterwards for customer service and a, a re reputable company to work with. But again, this was not Zappos policy. This was simply someone who worked at Zappos who decided to take action and do something innovative and kind of steer the company in the right direction. These are two examples of two, like, let me say, low level common employees who did something great for the company, something uh, really innovative. Um, uh, something to, uh, to, you know, also to, uh, to keep in mind, having a little bit of perspective of uh, the impact of little companies in the, in the, in the economy and in the, uh, in the community. Um, oftentimes, especially in a business class, we talk about, you know, the stage four businesses, you know, 500 plus. And every time we talk about, you know, business, we are talking like from that perspective, you know, companies that have HR departments and so forth. When in reality, I mean, most of the businesses, the bulk of job creation happens uh, at the lower end of that pyramid. When you look at self-employed, you know, or stage one, which is two to nine employees, stage two, you know, 10 to 99 employees. That's where the bulk of businesses really are, okay? Um, my friend also goes on to talk about books that, uh, talks about basically the, the um, how can I phrase this? Um, many communities out there are looking at ways to make themselves more innovative, to attract more businesses, to develop, to foster more innovation in their communities, to so there can be more job creation, better jobs, higher paying jobs. And a few books have been written on the topic. One, uh, The Rainforest, and another one, Startup Communities. Um, I had the opportunity to meet uh, one of the co-writers of the book on the right, uh, The Rainforest. Um, and uh, these books you know, talk at length about the right environment for innovation to happen, the role that government plays, uh, the role that universities or higher, higher education play in, uh, in the creation of new businesses, and of course, uh, you know, uh, renowned entrepreneurs. Um, and there are a lot of resources in the community and I'm gonna kind of run through, uh, through them quickly. Uh, what I want to highlight one more time is that what you're seeing, the, the resources that you will see in a moment are resources that are e either found exactly with the same name where you live or you can find a comparable one. So kicking, kicking it off with One Million Cups, many of you went there and, and do know that One Million Cups uh, happens across the country on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. Um, and in the local one, the closest one to us, actually there's two that are sort of equidistant, uh, so uh, Daytona, and the other one would be Sanford. Daytona, believe it or not, is bigger, even though it has a smaller population. Um, I mean, bigger in attendance. But across the United States, uh, this is a great place. You know, people go to One Million Cups because it is a great place for inspiration. Um, you have all walks of life, uh, presenting their ideas and it's all stages anywhere from on the left hand side we have schmancy pops um, this kid he was actually here at Stetson University once as a speaker on the entrepreneurship Thursday uh, event uh, 15 years old with a drive to make really cool uh, icicles or uh, uh, um, you know called the, the, the schmancy, schmancy pops uh, doing great business, okay? And on the other hand, and he's just in the beginning stages of his his, uh, his business. On the other side, you have uh, Command Medical. Uh, this gentleman who, who runs a multi-million dollar business already at the sunset of his career. So at One Million Cups, you get to see anything and everything, okay? Uh, you have also Kickstarter Weekend. Um, Kickstarter Weekend happens all over the country under different names. Uh, in fact, uh, since uh, this... Um, Slide, oh, actually, we still call it here Kickstarter Weekend because the other in other in other parts of the United States they call it a Startup Weekend. Um, but either way, this is a kind of event where people uh, share ideas on a Friday night. They form teams, and then in the course of like forty eight hours, they build companies around those ideas and they pitch them on Sunday evening. They basically started a company and they pitch it to a, a panel of judges, and it's it's really cool to watch how someone in the course of just a few hours uh, are able to go from idea to business. Uh, it, it, really cool. I, I would encourage you to try that at least once in your life. I've, I've been I've been involved in this more as a mentor for teams, but it, it, I mean, awesome. Elevate, uh, it's uh, Daytona Beaches, 
uh, version of something called Ignite. Um, Ignite has been a national uh, speaker uh, competition, if you will, like public speaking competition. And it came from um, entrepreneurs realizing how critical it was to know how to be good at public speaking when you present an idea to investors. So they decided uh, somewhere in California, most likely San Francisco, they decided to start a competition where you could talk about anything. And when I say anything, you could talk about freaking, you know, pasta that you ate last night if you wanted, or you could talk about umbrellas, or you could talk about the beach, or talk about your business. You could talk about anything, but you had 20 slides that advanced automatically, uh, and you had a total of five minutes. So I do the math, whatever, uh, how many seconds per slide, but you had to know your pace perfectly well to be in sync with the slides. It was, uh, it's a really cool competition. It happens a couple of times a year in Daytona, uh, and I would encourage you to go. Uh, otherwise, so I, like I said, it, in Daytona, it's called Elevate. Elsewhere in the country, oftentimes you see it labeled as Ignite. Um, the next thing uh, that I'll talk about is SCORE. SCORE is available nationally. Our guest speaker, Jack Pfeiffer, is a gentleman right here in the middle. Um, and uh, this is an organization of retired uh, executives who help businesses at no cost. I've actually gone to them a couple of times uh, in, the, uh, in the past, and um, they have helped me with different facets of my, of my business. So it's a, it's a place to get wonderful advice from people who have been there and done that. People who have done, you know, for example, uh, law or, or legal or marketing for 20, 30 years, and now they're telling you, uh, giving you really relevant advice. I've actually taken some of you in the past to visit some of these uh, SCORE uh, um, uh, volunteers. Innovation Challenge uh, is a business pitch competition that we have been doing exceedingly well here locally. Uh, this exists all over the country in, with different names. Uh, there's always one or multiple organizations in every community that have funds to put on a business pitch competition. And ours, the local one, happens to be Innovation Challenge. Um, uh, the first year that we started, to, actually we have been going to many years, but since we, ex since we have the entrepreneurship program at Stetson as it exists today, uh, um, we have been doing very well. The people that you see on the screen is Jalissa Zoltko and Thomas Altoric that took first and second place on that competition that year. The following year, we won again, and we won first and second place again. Uh, it's just, we have been doing well at it, uh, but it's a really cool thing uh, to watch people share their ideas, compete, and, and you know, be uh, evaluated on, on how, how well they describe the target market and their go-to-market strategy, really cool. Uh, universities basically have uh, oftentimes, uh, like organizations within them, to offer help to businesses. In this case, I'm showcasing the, the Daytona State College's um, workshops, uh, and they, they're usually geared to small businesses, and it's like kind of like financial guidance. So do know that higher uh, uh, education institutions where you live will have one or more different kinds of courses to help, uh, to help out. Um, uh, business incubators, uh, again, just about every community, any self-respecting community in the country, has um, incubators or accelerators at the least, at the very least, uh, and um, they basically, an incubator, will help your business uh, grow. And if you get stuck or if you run into any problems, they tend to help you to find a solution. I don't know why I used the word tend. They help you find solutions. I'll give you one example. There's a very renowned startup in Volusia County called uh, details flowers it is a platform that uh, helps uh, florists or well, even event planners really uh, calculate their floral arrangement the costs of their, their flora floral arrangements in a very effective manner and uh, when you calculate your price you can actually book and buy all those flowers for for your event uh, really cool being used in I don't know how many countries but at the beginning this, uh, the owner of the company, her name is uh, Corrine Heck, good friend of mine, asked me for help locating a web developer. And for better or worse, I gave her a name. 
And this guy had worked with me in the past. I knew there was some like management, when I say management, like managing his emotions issues. And um, out of the blue, halfway in building her side after spending something like $70,000 in developing the side, the guy decides to take off. And she was left up in the air. I feel terrible that this is happening. And uh, luckily she was a, uh, a client of the, the Volusia County Business Incubator. And she spoke, my recommendation was that she speak with the director and she did. And the director said, worry not, this is not a solution that you, that you should uh, ponder uh, by yourself, ponder on by yourself. Let's get you help within a day. We're talking like 24 hours, but within 24 hours, uh, this director put together an advisory board that um, with all IT experts, people who were, uh, you know, experts in the field of, of programming, developing, who gave her uh, ideas and solutions to the problems she was facing because the language that her um, uh, platform had been written on was not very common. So she didn't know what to do. And so they gave her answers and fast forward, uh, I want to say like five years, she is doing ridiculous revenue uh, nowadays. She's, you know, clocking, I think it's close to a million dollars a year. Uh, so very, very cool. Um, uh, other things to notice, for example, the, the, there are uh, uh, organizations that help in specific areas of entrepreneurship. Like, for example, in this case, I'm showing you the hub on Canal. This is on, on uh, New Smyrna Beach. Uh, so this uh, organization specifically focuses on painters, photographers, anyone doing artistic stuff, okay? Uh, every community has those kinds of organizations. Sometimes they focus on helping women or another or you know minorities for that matter or specific industries but there's always you know communities try to do their best uh for for people who live in the community so in this case uh if new smyrna beach is known for artists they're helping them with that um i'm going to jump quickly through uh, there's events of entrepreneurial the entrepreneurial kind like entrepreneur night uh, colleges i've talked about them before a uh, great place to go to get help um there's economic development organizations, uh, which um, every community has one, and their goal is either to attract businesses to the area or to help existing businesses there do better. Uh, Trep Factory, I'm very happy to talk about this. Trep Factory, I was part of the, the original uh, board of directors. Uh, this was a guy who had a business that was sitting there not really making any money, and he decided to make the business available to students. So uh, you, you would apply for this and you would develop, you would basically run the company for a year with an, with an amazing group of individuals helping you, people who were uh, experts in different fields. So in the advisory board, uh, we had people who own really big companies and they were helping these students uh, run the business for a year and it was just a phenomenal experience. And still to this day, uh, they're, they're active. Um, I was part of Startup Quest, that was the, the regional director where we paired uh, people who had business ideas with, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we, we paired uh, technologies that existed in, in, in research institutions in Florida like UF, UCF, they have patents. Uh, we would pair them up with people who had the education to, uh, to, care, to develop commercial plans for those ideas. You can see me, I'm, I'm actually in both pictures that, that a few years ago for the winners of, of that competition. Uh, we have, um, again, talking about organizations, VMA, it's Evolution Manufacturers Association. If you're a manufacturer in this county, you know, you can be part of this group and if you needed help uh, with a specific issue, they ideally, they would, they would help you. Um, Trep Stars, it's a, a, a podcast uh, by uh, two buddies of mine who, uh, actually the guy who, who built the, these slides, this deck slide, was one of the people doing interviews. Uh, I happen to be in one of the, the episodes, I want to say it's the third episode that I'm, uh, I'm in there. Kind of cool, it just shows you uh, some of the um, cool entrepreneurial stories from the, from the community. Uh, then we have, again, more kinds of organizations that, that put together training programs for the community. Team Volusia is one of those economic development organizations that I mentioned before, CEO Business Alliance uh, too. Um, and I'm gonna jump through some of these. Uh, um, you can see there, I mean, there's a ton of services, mostly at no cost to you uh, and businesses uh, to get help, okay? And I think you should make a point 
And whenever you start uh, your uh, your career and you're working for a company and you get stuck somewhere, don't think that you have to know all the, the answers. You can contact some of these organizations uh, to get help, okay? Uh, I think he wraps up uh, this presentation by talking about how do I get involved and he talks about the five S's and mind you, the public here is not you, it's people who already, they have careers behind them. So he says how, you know, you should show up to, you know, all these kinds of events, that you should speak, that you should sponsor, that you should, uh, sh you know, do sweat equity. So in other words, help, help out. And of course, spread the word. Uh, not my presentation, nor are you the target uh, audience for what he is saying here. But uh, that's so you understand that he, the message that many people out there in the community are getting to help people like you. Uh, this uh, brings us to the end of the presentation. I hope this was uh, useful to you. I hope you realize that you're not alone, that uh, every community in the United States has some of these uh, valuable services. I think um, you should take advantage of them. Um, if you have uh, any questions uh, about any of these um, uh, services, things that I maybe didn't discuss, I am more than glad to, uh, uh, to help out. Uh, and I hope you're still staying safe. Take care, bye.